take two. This guy that I know the other day, who's, uh, his wife has left him for another man. And uh, this guy, he's, he's like still wearing his wedding ring, and he's got kind of the hopeful, you know, hey, we're going to make it through this uh, kind of feeling. And, and he's trying to kind of convince himself that it's going to be okay, but it just doesn't look like she's coming back. And this other friend of mine, she's telling me that like uh, she doesn't really have the same kind of beliefs as her family. And every time she goes to a family reunion, she said they all just turn on her. And they said they, she's like, they just get mean and, and angry. And she says, it just gets ugly really fast. And she leaves in tears every time. It's like everyone I know has wounds. And some are small, kind of petty, like, you know, you just need to get over it. But, but, but a lot of people, they're big and serious and deep wounds. I was talking to this girl I know the other day, this friend of mine, and Partway through our conversation, she just says, she's like, you know what, I was raped. It, it's like, it's like we could speculate why all this happens and why people do these kinds of things. We could try to figure it out forever. But I think what we want, what we want is to be free from this, don't we? It's like we want to be alive and, and healthy and, and whole. I mean, I don't want what somebody else did to me to like determine what my life is going to be like. Do you? Because sometimes it's like big things and sometimes it's small things. Maybe for you it's just like a, an offhanded comment by somebody you don't even know. But maybe it was somebody that you really loved or that you still love and, and they left you. Or like maybe like just a business partner who took the money and ran or a relative who abused you or a friend who like turned on you. And, and it's like you try not to think about it but... But then if you're like me, it's, then you end up thinking about it more than ever. And it's like, we want to put this stuff behind us, but, but how? Or if you had, ever had this happen, it's like you think you're over it, you think you're okay, you think it's in the past, and then you either run into the person, or you run into something that reminds you of them, what they did to you, and then it all comes back like, like worse than ever. And it's like you thought you were over it, but now you're more into it than ever, and the wound is like reopened, and it hurts more than ever. And then it becomes a a day or, or a week or 10 years later and now it's become like a part of you. It's like you can't shake it, you can't leave it behind. And so then eventually what happens is revenge becomes our only hope and we aren't free. Like I don't know what you're carrying around. I don't know how painful it is or how heavy it is or how long you've been carrying it around. But my question, or I think our question, as always, where was God when this happened to me? In the, in the book of Psalms, it says that God's eyes are on the nations. In the book of Proverbs in the Bible, it says that the eyes of God are everywhere. So whatever was done to you, whatever wrong was done to any of us, God saw it. It's like God was right there. In this book of Romans, chapter 12, the writer says, Don't take revenge, but leave room for God. It's like the writer says, just turn it over to God. Let God take care of it. Which is, it's like, a, it's like a nice idea, but isn't very easy to do, is it?
because like revenge, revenge is like part of our world, isn't it? And we talk like this all the time. We'll say things like, you know, I'll settle the score, or I'll teach them, or they'll learn not to mess with me. I mean, we talk like this all the time. But think about revenge. Think about revenge like at the deepest spiritual levels. I mean, revenge is really saying to God, God, I don't trust you to deal with this situation. This person wronged me, and, and I can't turn over to you because I don't know what you're going to do here. And so revenge is like saying, God, not only I don't, I don't trust you, but, but if I get revenge, then I can determine what happens here. I can control the situation. And, and so revenge is like saying to God, I, I, I don't trust you. I actually think I can do your job better than you can. And, and some friends of mine and I the other day, we were talking about this, this idea of what revenge really is at the deepest spiritual levels and how it's just an insane way to live. And my one friend starts telling this story. He says he used to have, like, golf balls in the glove compartment of his car. And so he'd be driving down the road and somebody would, like, cut him off or do something in traffic that got him mad. So he'd pull ahead of them and then he'd pull in front of them and then he'd take the golf balls out of the glove compartment and he'd like toss them out of his sunroof hoping that they would like dent the car that had cut him off and we're all laughing but but we've all done things like this haven't we like completely crazy things because we were just so bent on revenge and evening the score and it, revenge doesn't satisfy does it i mean have you ever really even the score? I mean, have you ever really gotten revenge and then, and then felt good about yourself? It's because revenge doesn't work, does it? freedom is so central to Jesus' teachings. It's like right at the heart of his message is this simple claim that God has forgiven us of all of our sins, doesn't hold any of our past against us, because none of us have clean hands, do we? I mean, we've all wronged someone. But with Jesus, there's no condemnation, there's no list of wrongs, there's no judgment. It's like the cross is God's way of saying, like, I don't hold your past against you. See, some people have a warped view of God, that God's like waiting to just like punish them for any wrong thing they do. And so even when it comes to doing the right thing, like in this case, forgiveness, there's this paranoia that if they step out of line at all, God's like waiting right there to squash them. And so, and so like any runny nose or any freak accident, anything bad that happens, people assume is like God punishing them because they weren't doing the right thing at that time or that everything's some sort of judgment or punishment. But this isn't the kind of picture that Jesus paints of God. Jesus gives us these pictures of, of a God who's like full of love and grace and mercy and forgiveness, who like keeps pursuing us and who keeps insisting that his way is the best possible way to live. So when I forgive somebody, I'm giving them what God has given to me. Have you ever heard somebody say that like, because of something that was done to them, they've been like, you know what, you don't understand. What they did to me is so horrible, I will never forgive them. I can't forgive them for what they did. But like, what if God said that? But what about those people, like the kind that are going to hurt us again and again? We may forgive them, but they'll just keep hurting us. There's this proverb in the Bible that says, like a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool returns to their folly. It's like some people are destructive and they're toxic and they're going to wrong us and they're going to do it over and over again. And the relationship may never go back to how it was. And so with some people, we might need to set up boundaries with them 
put some space. Some people, we may not even be able to be around them. Because forgiving isn't always forgetting. Like in the healthiest of relationships, somebody wrongs the other person and then they just, like they let it go and they move on and it's no big deal. But sometimes forgiving is remembering. And some people are going to keep returning to their vomit. And we don't have to be there when they do. If he's hitting you, or you're being abused, you need to get out. You need to get out now. Because some people, toxic, dangerous people, they may need to live with the consequences of what they've done. I mean, that might be how God gets their attention. And so to forgive is to, is to let it go, is to set them free, is to give up on the desire for revenge. But ultimately, to really forgive somebody, I have to actually wish them well. I, I have to hope that good comes their way. Because if I'm still unable to wish them well and wish them good, then I'm really just waiting for them to get punished. And I really, I haven't forgiven them. Maybe the real point of forgiveness isn't other people. I mean, we talk about setting them free and letting it go, but, but maybe forgiveness is ultimately about me and about you. It's about us. Because when I forgive somebody and I set them free, it's, it's, like, I'm, it's like I'm really setting myself free. It's like when I forgive them and I let them off the hook, I'm really letting myself off the hook. If I'm still carrying all that stuff around, it's, it's, a, miserable, it's a miserable way to live. I mean, I don't know what you're carrying around or how long you've been carrying it around. But as we journey through life, we get hurt and we get wounded and we end up carrying these debts that people owe us. We, it's like we carry them with us everywhere we go. And after a while, these bags get heavy, don't they? And, and they can end up making the journey exhausting. God didn't create you to carry that stuff around. God created you to be free, like free from bitterness, free from rage and anger and revenge, free from feeling like you're the judge of the world. I mean, what does it look like for you to just let it go? I mean, maybe you have to do something. Maybe it's a phone call or an email or some sort of face-to-face -face conversation, or maybe there's just that moment like we're deep in like the very fiber of your being, you just say, I'm not gonna carry that around for one more day. And, and this might be the first step in a long process of letting it go. But we, but we need to forgive and we need to start today. We need to do it today, now. I mean, forgiving is an action. It's something you do. So may you forgive as you've been forgiven. May you give to others what's been given to you. May you set someone free and find out that it was you. And may you do it today because you might not have the chance tomorrow. Wow. <laughs>